Hi people, welcome to my first rent video on Wayward Wednesday. Oh, well, 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 I'll give you one one guess, what do you think I'm going to rant about? If you thought that um, I'm going to rant about COVID, you're wrong. I'm ranting about people that do not do their part. And I hope this serves as, you know, a lesson on empathy. I want you to take on a journey with me. But before I do that, I want to remind you, not remind you, I just want to share with you. This is my own opinion, thoughts and feelings. Don't take it as medical advice and you can do whatever you want with your life. And if you do disagree with the things that I want to mention, please do so respectfully on the comments down below. I'm always open to hear from both point of views. Okay, that being said, that all the way. You know what I'm sick and tired? I'm sick and tired of hearing people saying that the government this, the government that COVID is a main made to keep everyone in the same thing. I'm not going to let them take away my freedom, right? As if wearing a mask and practicing physical distancing to help flatten the curve takes away their freedom because God forbid, you know, I can't go to a restaurant. And um some of the things are valid. Our freedom has been taken away because of the pandemic. However, I think and I feel is so, and I'm going to curse for the first time. If you have kids, please mute me right now. But it's so fucking selfish that you think that COVID is nothing because it doesn't kill as many people and it only kills old people. It's like how fucking ignorant are you can i just tell you my point of view on why you should do your part to flatten the curve <sighs> the worst thing about covid in my opinion covid19 every time i say covid it's covid19 or whatever new one is coming up but the worst thing about it is not its mortality rate it's how fast it spreads and by the way this new strand spreads even faster oh why is that a problem you ask it's not like it's gonna kill me first of all it's a new disease you don't know what the long-term effects are but if you want to risk your health risk your health but i'll tell you why it is a problem of how fast it spreads because even though it might have mild symptoms for your normal healthy people, there's a lot of people out there that you should care about that are high risk. Yours truly being one of them, but not as much. You have diabetics, you have older people, you have people that are actively going through cancer treatment and chemo and their immune system is very deficient at the moment. You have children you have babies, you have pregnant women. These people are gonna suffer way more if they happen to catch this mild flu, okay? That's not enough for you. Um, how about the fact that why our numbers are high, especially now, for example, where I am, children are forced to do online distance, like distance learning. You think that's not a problem? Do you think there's not abused children that are now stripped away from the one safe haven, which is cool, is a time where they are or they can be and hope every day that someone is going to find out they're being abused at home? No. Now they are stuck at home with nothing to do but to live with their abusive parent and now with no one to really knock on the door and know something is wrong and report them. We're taking away hope from abused children. Did you think about it? No, you probably didn't, right? You know, another thing that um, a lot of people use it as an excuse not to do the part, not to wear a mask, not to do this and complain about our government, which by the way, we do have 
no, I'm not going to talk about government. But in Ontario, where I live, I think that the provincial government as well as the federal government in Canada are doing a really good job to do what they can. So measures are in place, people are just not respecting them. So it's not a problem like it is in many countries about um, top-down strategies. It's really a people problem. And um, a lot of people that choose not to wear masks or not to practice physical distancing, they use an excuse that, you know, by doing so, we are killing small businesses. Uh, I'm sorry, but by not doing so, you are killing small businesses because you're just prolonging the time that they have to close. People are losing wages, but you don't care about that, do you? No, because, oh, God forbid, I wear my mask for five minutes or I can do my nails, correct? God forbid. <laughs> I mean, I have the money to do that because I can work from home. But you're not thinking about those people that now cannot work from home and are not working, right? No, you're not. And now to end my rent and my story time, I want to take you on a journey with me. I want you to know that I am not the only person who's in pain every day because of you. Why? What do you think your choice has to do with my pain? Well, because Hospitals don't have beds right now. I had a very important surgery canceled and I have to live with pain and with the knowledge that every day that passes by my surgery whenever it comes might be more, you know, might be riskier. I've known a lot of people that have had surgeries canceled for breast cancer, for example, and then instead of having their surgery and then radio and then figuring things out, they are basically doing chemo every day. Do you know what chemo does to your body? It's not very nice. And you know, can I tell you a secret? Chemo is not always necessary. Uh, most times, especially with breast cancer, surgery and radio, as long as the cancer hasn't started spread to the lymph nodes, is more than enough. And um, chemo is such a harsh treatment. But now there's people that are doing chemo that might not have needed to do chemo, having the immune system way down. But I guess it doesn't matter as long as you keep your freedom. Or, for example, I have other stories too. I have a friend who's losing sight in her eye. Um, and her early onset glaucoma is progressing really fast, but her surgery was also canceled. But who cares? She can see with her other eye, right? Or how about that woman that had to go to the hospital? And this is a true story. That had to go to the hospital for um, a regular endoscopy, the doctors found cancer and they had to tell her by herself while she was in recovery because her husband, who by the way was in the parking lot, couldn't come in. Have you thought about the amount of people that are getting horrible news by themselves because they can't have anyone in the hospitals with them? Have you thought about the fact that many people that are home struggling with uh, mental illnesses because this is prolonging way longer than necessary? Have you thought about the parents? Oh yes, uh, we had a COVID um, outbreak at our local hospital in the child's wing. You know what happened? Well, only one parent could visit them and the hours were limited. Can you think, can you imagine yourself being that parent knowing that your child is really sick in the hospital and you cannot visit or having that conversation with the other parent to decide who is the only person that can go for as long as the outbreak is on it could be two weeks it could be more no i don't want to be that person have you thought about those people that have anxiety or ocd and they cannot go out because just being around people is giving them Anxiety, but you don't care. You don't wear your mask and you get right behind someone, right? Like, honestly, and um, I think the examples can go on and on. I'll keep it short and sweet. Just stop focusing on the mortality rate. And just imagine how much faster we all going to get through this together if everybody does done their part. And now more than ever, until next time, be the hummingbird.